while he was walking around, he told them that he would have to suffer, that he would be crucified, you see, and then on the third day that he would raise, right? Now I'll pick it up at 44. <clears throat> and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So now here we have down in the fulfillment, and Yahshua is saying that the way we're going to understand, in other words, he's talking to the apostles, you see, after his death, burial, and resurrection, he's saying the way we're going to understand, you see, is by seeing that all things were concerning him were fulfilled, you see, that were written in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets, you follow? So if you take any simple example, like for example, it said that he rose on the third day, you follow, you see? So now when you go back and you see how the children of Israel were in bondage, in other words, that was a type of death, you see? They were in bondage to Pharaoh and they came out of Israel or out of Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai in a five-day journey, right? No, third day. No, it was a three-day journey, you follow? It was three days, that, after three days, that they came out of this uh, bondage of Egypt, you follow? You go back and you look at, uh, at the story of Jonah, you see? And Jonah was how many days in the belly of the fish? Three days and three nights, right? And Yahshua said there shall be no, no sign except for the sign of Jonah, for he was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, you see. And so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, you follow? So Yahshua is everything that he's doing concerning helping us to understand Yahweh's purpose, you see, is written in the Law of Moses, and in the prophets, you follow? And so um, <clears throat> under, under, uh, under this covenant, you see, we're, we're going through a resurrection, you see, in our hearts and our minds, you see. And he's causing us to understand these things, you see. And uh, um, <clears throat> I don't believe I've ever uh, heard anybody work with the built reality of the resurrection on the third day, but um, <clears throat> um, something to think about. So you, but the tabernacle, you see, is a threefold structure, you see, you follow? And the tabernacle shows forth the resurrection in the third compartment because on the Day of Atonement, the high priest had to offer a, a sacrifice for himself, you see, and one for the people, you follow, and then also for the cleansing of the sanctuary. So the, um, uh, the, the, the high priest made three trips into this most holy place on the Day of Atonement, and it was on the third trip that Yahweh appeared to them, as it says in Leviticus 16. Tour. It says that uh, be, I will appear in the cloud between the archangels, right? So it was on the third trip into the most holy of holies, you see, that that resurrection occurred, you follow? And now we know that the most holy place in the tabernacle corresponds with the, the head or the most holy place in the body, because you are made in the image and likeness of Elohim by the pattern, you see. So the resurrection is occurring here, you follow, in your heart and your mind. And on the day of Pentecost, um, <clears throat> um, or, or when Yahshua died on the cross, you see, there was a great earthquake, and the veil that was in this temple, you follow, this is a tabernacle, it was, it was threefold, and the temple was the same. So the veil between the most holy place and the holy place, you see, was rent in twain, you see, showing forth that these two compartments would be made one, you follow? 
Now here in your body, you have the mind and the heart, you see. And in the physical, it's hard to get the mind and the heart together because the heart desires, you know, the emotional aspect of things where the mind would think, well, maybe that's not too good of a thing to do. And it's hard to, they kind of war against each other, you know. You know, you might think, oh, she's really beautiful, but, you know, she don't have a job and she can't <laughs> cook, you know, whatever. So, you know, your mind and your head is, is, is warring about these things, you see. But in the spirit, you see, Yahweh allows us to be unified in the heart and the mind because, you know, and, and when you think about it, when you go down to, go to church, for the most part, it's all emotional, you see. They're appealing to your... Uh, you know, feel good. They have nice music that they play, and they and they think you know they try and comfort you with with all these things. But they don't give you any sound knowledge concerning your Creator. They don't even teach you His name. You foul, you see. So now when you're coming down in here, you foul. You're getting a knowledge and understanding. You see, that allows you to love Yahweh with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind. So you're unified in your heart and your mind, you foul, and there's a resurrection in, in your third or your most holy compartment, you foul. So with that, um, I'm going to sit down. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> And thank you, Dr. Weber, from our Syracuse class. And at this time, we'd like to call on Dr. Lusa Mayangu. Good morning. I enjoyed the previous speaker. Mm. Uh, glad to be here and praise Yahweh for giving us this opportunity to be here, learn something about him every day, and get to share with our brethren. I like the part that you mentioned about emotion, the heart, and the mind. And and it's true, once you come here, sometimes you, you get, once you get to know Yahweh, it's not a feel-good thing sometimes, you know, because <laughs> you, you're getting, it's kind of a whooping. Yeah, you know, it's not about you, are, it's not about you. You know, Yahweh presents to you who he is, who he, he his really is, and how things are manifested. And sometimes we don't like it because just like how the children of Israel, just when he appeared to Abraham, you know, 400 years before even, you know, they were in bondage, he told him, you know, you are, you know, he blessed him, but he told him before that, you're going to have, you know, you're, you're going to go down and you're going to be in bondage, you know, but then he'll come and take them out of the, you know, the bondage. This is the same thing. The manifestation happens to us when we get in touch with Yahweh. You know, there are certain things. Just like one day, Genesis, I think you mentioned about you go to sleep, you you know, you cover your blankets, you, you there's a death, the burial, and the resurrection. You know, those those are things that it, as a human sometimes we, we tend to not like it because we always like the good things, you know. Good things have to come, you know. But you know, there is a struggle, you know, and if you, if you, like, when you come into school, you realize that Yahweh is the archetype, original pattern of the universe, and you even look on the first day of the, uh, of the, of the creation, there was chaos, and through that, you know, there was a death, 
burial, resurrection, all the way to ascension, and the glorified, you know, Yahshua, who he came down and fulfilled it according to what Weber was, uh, was uh, speaking, that there's a law and then there's a prophet. And the eye thing is very interesting because if you look even in atom and physiology of the eyes, you know, the, you are your perceptions and you know, when you see things but then the interpretations and putting together things is back there but it, you know the 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 interpretation of that things whatever you're seeing is not being like said okay it's like here and it's like here no it's in the unit like this eye come cross this way this one cross this way but the image is being interpreted, you know, being trans transfer. I don't know how to use that, but in in a one single unit, that's when you get to see that. Oh, you know, that's what I'm seeing. You know, so you have that two witness, but they all confirm back with that one unit, which is Yahweh, being Elohim, and being Yahshua. Elohim is a creation. He created this, uh, uh, all the creation that you see sitting around ourselves and then he himself again he came down and fulfilled it and then when you're talking about the eye it's not that it's a separate things no it's a continuation of things it's a unit of things that make sense of what you're seeing you see what i mean like you see something it's not that it's been cut off and separated and has to be transferred somewhere no you're seeing it's been transferred there and boom you you see, you understand what you are, you know, think about even the nervous system. Even people were blind. You know, they're feeling something. It's been taken to their, to their brain, and boom, it's back, and they know there's a depth somewhere here. There's, you know, the ears, you know, what we always say, the ears are good for your balance, because when you hear something, some people always think about the ear as just hearing, not knowing that if your ears are messed up, your balance is also is messed up. You know, working in the unit, confirming that Yahweh is, get that uh, John 4 and 24. Because those are things that you say when you go to church. And I'm one of those people who, I talk to a lot of people who are like church people. And I always have this approach. And it, that's just me. Everybody's different. When I talk to individuals who uh, have this other knowledge or have given, I don't try, I always try to go, how can I put it? I always try to go to according to what they know first, to make them come to what I'm trying to tell them. You see what I mean? Like, so people in church, like you say, the pastor will stand there and use emotion of people, you know, like a pastor who is very famous, and a lot of people are putting him, what's his name, Joe Austin, I think, yeah, yeah, you see this, so one day I sit and I look at him, and he was preaching, he really is that charismatic uh, speaker, and he used this emotion of people, and it's so easy for people to say, he know what I'm feeling, so he, you know, it's like, so he, he become a very good,